And now we live. Welcome to the Sata Morning News Show with your host, Captain Naga. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about alcoholism and psychotherapy and the uses, well, the therapy, therapy therapists that were <laughs> enacting these things in the past. But first of all, I just hope y'all having a wonderful morning, evening, night, midnight special every time this is seeing you. Take this energy now that we all in the same boat. We can start the conversation. Cool. Shout outs to the microphone as usual. Okay. Hey, y'all, make sure y'all following us on Twitter. No, mostly Instagram. Trying to get back on the Twitter thing. But mostly on Instagram and the YouTube. Support the Patreon stream. But hey, if y'all don't know, the Side Tie Morning News Program is just about. Me, Captain Naga, finding some scientific news articles or articles in the mainstream that's not just purely promoting psychedelic use, but had but um, research articles on studies on like treatments with depression, with psilocybin and mescaline, and just with scientists and just see what the world is up to. That's what this is all about. We just found random articles. Some days I'll probably find it a day ahead. Some days we just all just tying all together. And just tying as usual is when you combine your mind with your heart and you just keep <clears throat> letting that circle spin and you let whatever come out, come out. Let's see we got the tunes today. We back with the music. Had to get a little creative today, man. It's a lot of things that will try to stop you in this world. That's just the opening, just top message. It's a lot of things that's gonna try to stop you in this world. But you gotta not be, not get upset. I believe when I get upset, it stops the whole show right there. It's like, all right, I'm not doing nothing. So I know I'm not the only one out there that's like this. So when you trying to do something, some especially when it's something great, especially when it's something that you're not comfortable with, especially when it's something that's going to take you to the next level. A lot of things are just going to pop up to try to come you down. And it's going to come in the form of family members. And it's also going to come in the form of like technology just messing up. Took me a long time. It took me an hour to get this set up this morning. I tried to get on at seven. But I kept saying I'm not going to give up. Not going to give up. Eventually, I play the audio music through the phone, not through the computer. But, hey, so I just had to improvise. Keep your mind flexible. Keep your mind open. Because when usually when somebody gets upset, I believe it's just because um, they believe they can't figure out the idea. And that they were so focused on this one idea that they wasn't. They wasn't going to give, they wasn't open to more interpretations, more possibilities. We live in an infinite world, infinite, a world of infinite possibilities, so to speak. <laughs> and you're a person of infinite possibilities. Anything can happen. So staying focused on one idea and being upset that that one idea did not work is total bull crap. It's malarkey, dude. <laughs> But yo, it's I'm I'm just I'm just throwing out examples. So thank y'all for tuning into the Side Time Morning episode, morning show with Captain Naga. And just persevere. Persevere. Go with your intuition. All right. So now that we all hyped up and we all just tying a bit. We're going to dive into this next article. All right. It's from maps.com.org slash research. I'm going to drop the link in the description. There we go. Wait. I'm saying I ain't copied. I got a couple surprises, man. This going to like just turn into a kind of podcast, but it's still the morning show. But we just going to tie. No man, no, no telling how long this going to be. All right, so y'all got the link. You can follow on if y'all want, but I have some notes ready. Ha ha! So that I can skip to some parts that I think are really enjoyable or needs to be displayed. 
All right, treatment of alcoholism using psychedelic drugs, a review of the program of research. Now, this is by, if y'all can see this, uh, I'm, I'm going to go for it. You know, it's just how we always go for these words. <laughs> Her name is Maria Vittoria Mangini. She has an MS and a PhD. And this is just her study. Yeah, the treatment of alcoholism. Um, in the beginning, they're going over the history and the model of psychosis, the model of psychosis hypothesis. And they talk about how Humphrey Osmond was doing research with LSD and was seeing, in mescaline, they were seeing how um, it brings about the same symptoms that people were experiencing that suffer from um, schizophrenia. And they were trying to induce these states of mind so that they can be there as therapists and see what it is that they can do to help the person in that heightened state, the heightened state. All right. And then um, as we go down, as we go down. All right. Um, yeah, where I wanted to start at was psychedelic therapy. Here it is. It's on page 383. <laughs> this is page three. All right. Psychedelic therapy. The focus of the Saskatchewan hospital program changed as the researchers came to believe that. And that is not what I wanted to <laughs> hold on, bro. Hold on, sis. Here it is. The influence of A.M. Hubbard. On this Sose Hospital, the Saskatchewan Hospital research group became aware of A.M. Hubbard's, the unpopular um, father of the American psychedelic therapy movement. Oswell Osmond traveled to British Columbia to examine some of the alcoholics who have been treated with LSD using Hubbard's technique, which were said to be particularly effective. Hubbard, who had accumulated a large series of unpublished cases while working with gravely ill alcoholics, used music, flowers, and advocative symbols and pictures to enhance and direct the drug experience. The goal was to Promote increased self acceptance and spontaneously spontaneity by encouraging alcoholics to reflect on themselves and their lives during this process. In addition, Hubbard favored the single overwhelming experience that produces dramatic and permanent change. This format came to be identified as psychedelic therapy. The research group accepted the idea that an exact adherence to Hubbard's techniques was needed to properly evaluate his claims in the accounts of successful treatment that Osmond had obtained from Hubbard's patients in Vancouver. Shout outs to Canada. Shout outs to Psych Substance. <laughs> Hubbard was invited to conduct demonstrations of his methods for the I'm going to just call it the, the Saskatoon Hospital Research Group during a two-week visit to Saskatoon. The three therapists from Saskatoon Hospital, Hoffer, Chihuahua, all, <laughs> they got some names on them, observed Hubbard's sessions. They were favorably impressed by Hubbard's skill and sensitivity. That's because he had his own experience, man. Experience is key. Experience is everything. Beginning in January 1958, it's way back, they began to modify their treatment techniques on the basis of Hubbard's methods. A further report of Scarsman Hospital. This was nice, too. Stay tuned. This is, this is real good. In 1958, Colin Smith wrote a follow-up article to his report on the Squash One Hospital pilot study entitled Sun Reflections on the Possible Therapeutic Effects of the Hallucinogens with Special Reference to Alcohol. It introduced some interesting topics that other researchers will later elaborate upon. He'd offer thoughtful appraisal of some of the deficiencies in the existing research on LSD and mescaline and of their protuitive therapeutic effects. And he attempted to address how the psychological effects of these drugs were understood in different, different in ways by different researchers. Hey. Mm -hmm. 
Not yet. In a bit. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. I I'm not good at ignoring people, especially my daughter. All right, where was I? The article outlined the technique then being used by the Scotchwan Hospital Group. Patients... Patients were first asked to freely give consent after a full discussion of the nature of the drug. After receiving their doses of LSD, they were encouraged to relax by listening to music and by examining paintings. According to Smith, it was hoped by this method to make the experience a thought-provoking one rather than a frightening one. At present, I avoid the use of suggestion during the experience, and with one expectation... Exception, I do suggest strongly to the patient that he discontinue drinking, Smith, 1958. Patients frequently were not asked to describe their experiences until the following day, and the overall tone was produced, produced was one of psychological safety and helpful friendliness. The treatment had been described in the original part of the pilot study as LSD and mescaline used as adjuncts to treatment consisting of superficial psychotherapy supplemented by occupational and recreational therapy. In the follow-up article, Smith noted that the well-known difficulty of estimating the effect of treatment in psychiatry. He recognized the way in which the personal factors such as style, training, and orientation of the therapist influenced the psychological situation created in LSD therapy. Yeah, he was seeing how depending on the person in the room, depending on that person's lifestyle, depending on the person lifestyle that was going in, that all has something to do with something. That's why here on Just Tile, we try to get things together and we try to come together as a community, share ideas so that we all can uplift each other and share what works for us because all we can do is do what works let's let's not do let's stop doing things that don't work and just accepting the side effects of death let's do things that that are working that are uplifting people no matter how strange the idea may come off to you just tie just think about it All right, all right, all right. The research group. Okay. I'm just going because I'm not going to. I'm just not a boring show. <laughs> yeah, and they say how they stress the importance of follow up studies. Measure previous occurrence of delirium and existence of other complications of alcoholism. Studies were provided, but not the limit of how many subgroups of patients had clinical. Yeah. That's about that. So, what I was taking from that was that before the drug thing went down, they was doing a lot. Where is it at? 384. Yo, thanks for tuning in to the Sob Time Morning News Show. As I usually say when I'm doing these long pauses. <laughs> if y'all have anything, any articles y'all ever want to send, send them my way. Send them to Just Tie Way. Y'all ever have any concerns? Any ways that I can even improve the show? Leave them in the comments or send me an email. At just tie now at gmail.com. Again, that's just tie now at gmail.com. There it is. Yeah. This was something that was cool. That's what it was. It was talking about in this study. Um, it was talking about how self-surrender 
It's titled Self-Surrender as a Factor in Treatment Effectiveness. And this is something that we can all take. We can, I believe we can all take something from this, from this research, from this passage that I'm about to read from maps.org. All right. Um, the, y'all see what I'm talking about. The Satchuan researchers attempted to list the most common changes in perception, emotions, and understandings reported by patients and volunteers who had LSD sessions. These effects were then grouped into six types or levels of experience. This represented a continuum determined by the degree to which the subject experienced surrender of his you. Oh, that's Alan. They got an Alan Watts sample on the music. I thought it was somebody in the room. <laughs> but um, this represented a continuum determined by the degree to which the subject experienced surrender of his usual patterns of emotions and perceptions and changed his self-concept in favor of complete self-acceptance. They concluded that the therapeutic importance of the LSD experience lay in its ability to disrupt habitual patterns of thinking and feeling to create an opportunity for this change in self-concept to occur it's like it opens the door you're like whoop here i am here i am how do you do <laughs> the differences in the phenomenon reported by different researchers to be caused by psychedelic drugs were understood to be the product of patients different differing levels of experience self-surrender this level in turn was influenced by the extent to which the therapeutic atmosphere reflected complete acceptance of the patient. And then in my mind, not just made them seem like they was some test subject. The researchers proposed the psychotic manifestations in the drug experience were produced by the persons trying to maintain his usual perceptions and self-concept. Just gotta let go, let it be. And then you carry that with you the rest of your life, as they, as you see, and they saying, we hold on to a lot of things, and that's why a lot of people are angry, angry. Let it go, let it go. <laughs> All right, uh, where was I? Confrontation with repressed unconscious material was understood as a preliminary stage in the process of gaining complete self standing and self-acceptance and remember this is a scientist this is not no guru this is not a hippie this is a scientist with licensed therapists seeing that when they talking it out the first stages of going through self-acceptance this stage that a lot of people that experience psychedelic drugs say when they meet god or become one with the universe and with every breath this is it all starts with self-acceptance it all starts with releasing traumas. Going back, go back. I say this a lot in the Just Ties. Go back, meditate. Sit with yourself, sit with your thoughts, and go back to your childhood and see what pops up. Just let any thought that pops up and just let that movie play. It can be really, it can really hurt you, bro, really try to hurt you. Or it can be a lot of uplifting good things. Whatever it is that go, just focus on it because it's what you needed at the time. The thing is our ego tries to fight it. But the more and more you practice it, the more and more you be able to release more traumas and understand more why people do what they do. Once you accept yourself, you're able to see why people do what they do, if y'all understand that. If I said that clear enough. Just to... Uh, Given this understanding of the importance of surrender in psychedelic therapy, the Saskatchewan Research Group emphasized the need for a safe and supportive environment and empathetic staff. Empathetic staff. Yes, nurses. Y'all got to do your job. Y'all some cool people. Because people dying in near-death experiences, y'all right there with them. So shout outs to all the nurses, the empathetic nurses. They pointed out that unsympathetic, hostile, and unfeeling personnel bring about fear and hostility with a marked increase in the psychotic, psychotic, or psychotic aspect of the experience. These views reflect the influence of A.M. Hubbard on the Sconswin Hospital Research Group. 
And that's, that's, this is all science. This is not just trip, people tripping, but the thing is that we all are experiencing the same realms, just to keep it funky for a minute. I'm reading scientific articles, but it's a lot of people. You can come and experience this for yourself. But I do know it's a lot of young people and it's a lot of uneducated people out there that are just ignorant because they're uneducated. And when you're ignorant, you just do out of ignorance. So here we are. Share this page with your friends. Share it. You don't know who's going to need this. That's, I saw that's, that's what that is. <laughs> Hold on one second, bro. How do I share? How do I share this page while I'm on it at the same time? Will I ever know? No, 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 no. <laughs> so forget about it. All right, we live, man. This live thing is awesome. I like doing this stuff. It's, it just feels natural. Natural. <laughs> if that means anything, this is if this reality is an illusion. What is natural? <laughs> hey, y'all gotta think outside the box at all times. All right, I'm searching to see if I should influence many of his. All right, all right, now I'm gonna go to where I was at the last time. Yeah, if you keep going down the article though, like really check out and go in depth in this article if you if you have the time, if you have the time, like the York County Clinic Studies the Union Hospital studies. These are all studies that people were doing to see if they can, if LSD had some kind of effect on alcoholism, on the treatment of alcoholism. And they all had their different flaws in their experiments, like a lot of people didn't follow up on the participants enough, or uh, um, what else, what else was a flaw? People are given different kinds of doses, like different amounts and things. It's, it's always difficult. It's always factors in there. But they took the good and they hospitals were around this time and before drugs were considered, well, not considered, before these drugs were illegal. So remember, we do not condone the use of illegal drugs on Side Time Morning News Show at all. At all. That's just a warning out there. For the for this for the, the channel for the Facebook and for the YouTube people. <laughs> um but yeah, that's what's happening. Threw me off track shouting them out. <laughs> and that's when you just breathe. Get back on track. All right, page 404. Will you please load for me? Please load for me. Wow, I really lost track of what that was, bro. <laughs> I really lost it. Whatever. Uh, 404. That's what page I said. I talked about how the research decline. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. How when this was before drugs were made illegal by Ronald Reagan and the Drug Administration. All these studies, all these hospitals were coming together, sharing studies um, because it was this new drug, LSD. And they found mescaline too that um mescaline from the peyote and they were like this is doing something it's working it's treating people for better or worse from alcoholism 
Uh, as some y'all all know, all psychonauts know, and for the new tires and people out there, that the peop the person that started the AA, I believe that is. Hold on, I don't want to get stuff wrong. Jamie, look that up. Uh, <laughs> recover alcohol. Hold on. The program where people go to get treated for alcohol. And it's like a six-step program or seven-step program. The person that, I, I'm just tying, but the person, computer not loading it, but the person that created that, one of the steps that were originally part of it was LSD. Because he himself overcame alcohol, his alcoholism, his alcohol demons, however you want to put it, with the help of LSD and therapy and all the other steps that now the world is using. But they took out that step because the drug administration made it legal. So they just had to take it out. Like that's wild. But that that's the door opener to allow all the other thoughts to even think about coming through. Give me one second. Sign up with the music. It says, oh snap. Google cracks me in. Scan the music bank on guys. Uh, what is random thing I got? Oh, I got this book, y'all. Yeah. This was a cool read. It's more of a history kind of thing. Well, alternate history. But it's called There Were Giants Upon the Earth. Gods, Demigods, and Human Ancestry. The Evidence of Alien DNA, Zechariah and Sitchin. It's a, I got this book from the thrift store because... All the, the stuff that I get into, they always say, like, this was one of the first books that started it. Of course, you always still have your, come on, advertisement. You still have your own opinions, your own thoughts. Any book, any history is just somebody else's history. But still, people got something to say sometimes. And that book has a lot, inspired a lot of future researchers like you see the ancient aliens going and just looking back at history and seeing that maybe the Finx was made 10,000 years ago and not just like 2,000 years ago and what does that imply oh wait it's having a little difficulty with the music Okay. All right. Let's start this back up. Let's find this article. Page, I said 404. Or it just had no music for right now. That works too. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, controlled studies. Oh, I can read this real quick. Controlled studies of psychedelic therapy for alcoholism. According to Sydney Colon, there were good reasons for why psychedelic therapy with LSD was administered to more alcoholics than those to any other diagnostic category. There was a large number of potential candidates for treatment because everybody is on the booze, man. Of often these were persons who had failed one or more previous attempt at therapy for alcoholism. Few were expected to recover spontaneously. From a methodolic standpoint, evaluation, evaluation was thought to be simple, involving only a straightforward assessment of the amount of drinking. So LSD therapy as a method of alcoholism treatment characteristically employed a minimum number of experiences with large doses of 200 to 300 units or more, well, micrograms or more. S psychedelic therapy was inexpensive, easy to administer, and consistently reported to be more effective than previous treatments. 
uh, <laughs> um, Smart at L 1967 is when that was said. The rapid acceptance of LSD in the treatment of alcoholics on the basis of extravagant claims of early success was followed by criticism of the method motives and conclusions of early researchers and the continuous contentious atmosphere surrounding LSD researchers arguments over the implications of the reported success of these enthusiastically received and seemingly successful treatments for alcoholism were among the most passionate <laughs> they were among the most passionate they say that's what they say that's really weird, guys, why this phone just like, I don't want to play music anymore. I ain't gonna, <laughs> I wanted you to read that with no background music. <laughs> uh, it's all good. It's all fine. This really is like not gonna play. Oh, that phone is dead. All right. Hold on one second. Almost done, Isla. Do do do. All right. If some of y'all skipped ahead, I still I appreciate y'all. All right, this is how I wanted. This is the last article that I found in here. Well, the, not, the last one I want to read to y'all. It was on page four hundred four, and it's about the how this um, doctor researched the decline of LSD research. All right, this is what she wrote. And buzzing noise. All right. Savage's concern with the adverse publicity and the fear of disapproval might have affected the environment of LSD research was shared by other investigators. And the U.S. Centers on Research and Regulations of LSD held in 1966, the year in which the Manadult State Hospital study began. Daniel X. Charles Clay Dunbar, an Assistant Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, Philip R. Lee, all testified on the impact of public pressure on LSD research. Lee claimed that adverse publicity made scientists less willing and less eager to study LSD. Dahlberg asserted that research programs, particularly in state hospitals, had been restricted in response to the labeling of LSD researchers as deviant. And Friedman pointed out that the atmosphere of the sensationalism about LSD abuse of Obscured the importance of LSD research and made fair and dispassionate, dispassionate consideration of its potential usefulness difficult. Like because of how it was being stirred up in the media, it was hard to study. And scientists, y'all know they straightforward minds. They're not all like, oh yeah, I want to fight the power. They got they got backgrounds to worry about. They got degrees to worry about. I mean, like they have to. They have people on their backs, so they have to make sure that they always doing things right or else they just not going to study it. And this is what was happening, especially when it became illegal. They just had to stop. All right. Um, this, is, this is just some history for you guys. The important, all right, pointed out that the importance, whoa, hold on. Senator Senator Robert Kennedy declared that excessive negative publicity about LSD had caused everyone associated with it to be inaccurately labeled as a criminal or a cook as some of some kind. A cook. K-O-O-K. I'm a cook. <laughs> or a kook. Oh, a kook. A criminal or a kook of some kind. That makes more sense. Daniel Friedman's pivotal 
1968 paper on the use and abuse of LSD concluded that we have been more awed than aided by our experience with these drugs. According to Abraham at Bridge and Gold Gears review of scientific publications on LSD and index mendicus from 1960 through 1994, a dramatic reversal from a pre prodominance of positive to negative reports occurred in 1968. Man, man, shout out to 1968, which reflects a strong cohort period effect on scientific activity in this area. This effect describes a biphysic change in the tone taken by societal so, oh, pseudo scientific publications towards a new pharmacological discovery in which early enthusiasm is replaced by later sober reconsideration. I mean, sober too long. <laughs> it's about them sober thoughts, but I believe most people get sober thoughts when they don't meditate. If you meditate, you can always have those levels of thinking that you get when you ingest plants and that's what the plant teachers teach you from my point of view at least um yeah at a time of major social political upheaval the controversy around psychedelic drugs emphasized many of the conflicts between traditional values and new social and moral arrangements. The emphasis and funding of re LSD research shifted towards efforts to prove its potential for harm and to discourage its use. Wow. It just shifted. First, they was funding money. This was happening. It was funding money to research this because it was helping. So they just put more money in, more money in. And then all of a sudden, they said, no, nope, y'all get no money, no money. Give me, give me back. And now we're going to give that money to discredit y'all, literally, to discredit y'all and to discredit the use of any further use of this, of this chemical. That's wild. And it just happened. And people voted for it. Or it was just signed into law. People ain't really get to vote for the um, Rand Richards in time for the drug administration to just make all drugs illegal. It don't work like that. They ain't want alcohol to be illegal. They just did it. <laughs> Got two more paragraphs left in this. Based on the work of Ludwig, Levon, and Stark and other contemporary research, the National Institute of Mental Health declared in 1975 that attempts by investigators over the years to use LSD as an adjunct to psychotherapy or as a special type of psychotherapeutic intervention have not clearly demonstrated therapeutic value. What? <laughs> yeah. If social policy considerations influenced the direction and findings of LSD research, it was not a unique episode in the history of science. According to Health, well, no, it's according to Heath, 1988. The results of scientific research are often ignored or distorted in the interests of furthering Pacific national or international policies. Read that again. <clears throat> According to Heath, 1988, the results of scientific research are often ignored or distorted in the interests of furthering Pacific national or international policies. In alcoholism research, for example, Fillmore, 1984, found that problem definitions, prevalent prevalence estimates, and cause appraisals were all subject to influence by policy considerations as sentiments related to temperance and prohibition shifted over time. That's, wow. And this is all in a doctor's PhD paper. This is a good research paper.
And then they start going on. If y'all want to read about the social side effects of LSD and the implications, goes on and on and on and on. But that's that's what I wanted to read for today. I'm gonna save the rest probably for another time. But ah, uh, that's what happens when you have. 21 tabs open on a phone. And the, <laughs> the one tab you have open is not going to work. That just makes perfect sense, right? <laughs> See, y'all, you just can't get mad at things. Just got to know that sometimes it's probably your fault. Or you're just ignorant. I was ignorant of that everything was open so I was acting in ignorance I was like you, the phone just don't want to work <laughs> and really it was just going through a lot the phone was just going through his own stuff it was trying to juggle all those thoughts at one time it had like 21 tabs open <laughs> how many thoughts that is imagine hearing 21 voices in your head at one time and trying to process it <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I don't think we're gonna. Unless this loads up, we're not gonna be ending with any music. But hey, thanks for tuning in to the Sata Morning Show. I'm gonna be doing some giveaways pretty soon, so be sure y'all there for that. <laughs> Hmm. Um. Soon after this, I'm gonna go live again, and I'm gonna be it's just gonna be like a podcast. I'm just gonna be talking. I'm gonna be finding videos. I'm doing whatever comes, whatever ways. This is just some ideas. I'm just tying. If y'all have any articles or any ideas or any artwork y'all want me to show on the show, just throw it my way. Yeah, I keep thinking about trying to get music, <laughs> but it's not going to work right now. <sighs> hey, remember, it's just ties when you combine your mind with your heart. Keep that circle spinning. Let whatever come out, come out. Oh, I'm going I'm to throw this in, y'all, in there for y'all. I still got some thought. Hey, wait, where is it? Found a PS1 and a PS2 at the same store for $7 a pop. $7 a pop. As well as. It in it. GTA Vice City. All of these was two dollars. GTA Three. Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. And Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers. Man, drop something in the comment below if any of these ring a bell. If any of these ring a bell, let me know. But these were all two dollars each. This was I played all of these games. And to think that the game that would wake me up, GTA 5, to believe in, when well, I had his hand in waking me up to believe in that this world is assimilation, GTA 5, playing GTA 3 and Vice City, you see where they started and see that they worked their way up to this level of detail through trials and errors. It's as if it, the world evolved. But that's a no. That's a whole nother story. Thinking, talking about assimilation. That's probably I'm probably make a whole nother podcast about that. But I'm gonna sign out right now, guys. I'm rambling on right now. I'm gonna just start a whole nother podcast. I'm gonna keep this one just a side time morning new show with your host Captain Naga. This has been an awesome time, a great experience. I'm feeling good. Take this energy through the rest of your day or the rest of your night. Whatever it be. Remember, 
Do your research and keep your eyes in the skies, your eyes on the prize. Whatever you got to do, do more than just survive. It's time to live, take care of your kids. This is what we do. <laughs> Shout outs to Sid. <laughs> this is Kat Saga asking you, we all tie. But do we really tie? Sometimes I don't know, dude. Sometimes I don't know. Until next time, this is the Side Tie Morning Show with Captain Naga. And I'm just going to say adios.